Hi, welcome to Brainy Dental. In this video, I have covered a very important topic of toothwear. This topic comes in the exams both as a long question and individually as short notes. I have covered it in two videos. In the first video, I will be discussing attrition and in the next video, I will talk about non-carrier cervical lesions in details. So let's go ahead and watch. Toothwear can be defined as a pathological loss of tooth tissue by a disease process other than dental caries. It's important for you to understand that toothwear is a multifactorial condition leading to progressive loss of enamel and dentine. We can divide toothwear into attrition and non-carrier cervical lesions. Attrition can be further divided into occlusal attrition and proximal attrition. And non-carrier cervical lesions we divide them into abrasion, erosion, and abfraction. Attrition. Attrition is defined as a physiological loss of tooth structure due to direct frictional forces between the contacting teeth. That means the tooth to tooth contact. The teeth contact each other, rub against each other, and they cause attrition. Attrition is not a pathologic process. Instead, it's a gradual physiologic age dependent process. Since it's a gradual process, therefore, there are different clinical appearances. Initially, you will see slight flattening of the incisal edges. In moderate cases, there might be rounding of cusps or flattening, and in severe cases, hollowed out or reverse cusp may be present. These are photographs of different clinical appearances. In the initial phase, you can see there is only flattening of the incisal edges. Now, in moderate case, you can see that the rounding of, of the cusps is present. Also, along with the enamel, rings of dentine can be seen. Now, in a severe case, you can see a hollowed out area has got developed. This is known as reverse cusping. Coming to the etiology of attrition. Now, first is the aging. Now, it is associated with the physiological process of aging. As you turn older, you can see that the, your cusps and the incisal edges, they start flattening. Then frictional wear. Now, frictional wear of the tooth can result in attrition, which occurs due to mastication of coarse food, heavy occlusal forces, or in tooth hypoplasia. Now, you must understand that in tooth hypoplasia, like conditions such as dentinogenesis imperfecta or amelogenesis imperfecta, you can see pronounced attrition even with ordinary masticatory process. Then parafunctional movements of the mandible as seen in bruxism. Now, because of these parafunctional movements, there is generation of abnormal occlusal forces and this leads to frictional loss of the tooth surfaces. Then habits such as tobacco or betel nut chewing, they can also lead to loss of toothwear. We classify attrition in two ways, according to severity and according to location. Now, according to severity, there is first degree attrition where incisal edges and cusp tips, they become flat, but no dentine exposure results. Second degree, the tooth is worn down and parts of dentine, they get exposed. Third degree, Attrition facets, they show rings of secondary dentine. And fourth degree, tooth loss causes pulp exposure. Now, according to location, there is occlusal and incisal attrition, where attrition is seen on the occlusal and incisal surface only. Then, proximal attrition. Attrition is seen on the proximal surface only. Coming to the clinical features, firstly, for occlusal and incisal attrition, now, this causes flattening of the incisal edges or the occlusal surfaces initially. You can see it in the photograph. The flattening of incisal edges is seen here. Now, as the condition progresses, it can also lead to facet formation or reverse cusping. Again, see it in the photograph. This is a reverse cusp that is formed. Now, this type of attrition is usually seen in edge-to-edge -edge bite or in closed bite cases. Next, Progressive tooth loss, as you can see in the photograph, the teeth, they have got worn down to the level of the alveolar bone. This leads to reduced in the vertical dimension of the tooth and it creates problems such as reduced masticatory efficiency and cheek biting. Also because of attrition, their temporomandibular joint problems can result. And now since the dentine has got exposed, so the teeth, they are more prone to decay. 
also there is increased tooth sensitivity proximal attrition is the attrition on the proximal surfaces which are these and this results in decrease in the mesodistal dimension of the tooth and that causes drifting of the teeth next it also results in decrease in the embrasure size preventing adequate cleanability then widening of the proximal contacts and also reduces the overall arch length now these were the clinical features of attrition the treatment of attrition is not fixed it is dependent on the severity of the condition and the type of associated problems for the management of attrition following sequence should be followed in case there is an emergency the first step should be to identify any exposed tooth which is causing pain and then if the tooth is restorable root canal therapy is planned and if not extraction can be taken up now if case it is not an emergency then we go according to the symptoms so initially if the patient comes to you with painful hypersensitivity due to dentinal exposure it can be easily managed with a fluoride therapy or desensitizing products now in case of caries or cavitated lesion present on the attrition surface they can be restored with help of a metallic or metallic based restoration now we choose these type of restoration because where attrition is occurring that means that area is under high stress so these restorations would be able to withstand that stress now if attrition is resulting due to parafunctional habits such as bruxism they should be identified and controlled using a night mouth guard temporomandibular joint problems if they exist they are diagnosed and they are resolved and after all the symptoms are relieved occlusal equilibration is performed so that no abnormal occlusal stresses exist in the mouth anymore and in case there is loss of vertical dimension it should be compensated by using metallic crowns so in this manner you can very comfortably and systematically manage the attrition cases i hope you enjoyed this video do like it share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel Also check out the videos on management of deep caries lesions and principles of inlay cavity preparation. Now all the data in this presentation has been taken from textbook of operative dentistry written by me. The link of it has been given in the description box below. Thank you.